Welcome to About That Life Podcast. Um, we're here for episode two. I'm Coach C. Collins. I'm Coach MJ, Mr. God-Given Talent. And uh, welcome to the show. Hopefully we get right into it. Again, remember, you know, this is a basketball commentary about basketball and life and AAU and everything in between. We're just talking about the ground roots or the grassroots level, excuse me, uh, from the ground up. Uh, today, we have a very super ultra special guest here we go with the nonsense already <laughs> <laughs> my my guy coach ted uh mr himo ted amin ra uh but no this this is a good man um quick uh quick history uh, you guys are gonna hear me monologue a little bit because i've known this guy for damn near 20 years yeah, so almost I'm gonna two, just, two decades yeah. yeah so i'm gonna just give you guys a quick rundown of this man's greatness um well, currently right now, he is a coach, a uh, women's coach at William Jessup uh, University, um, and he's a heavy influencer in women's basketball, big advocate uh, for it, and he makes he's definitely left his mark in the world. Uh, he's also an AAU coach for our program, uh, Youth Basketball Academy. He owns basically his own training company, Coach Ted Training, uh, very similar to me and Mark, and he is also a college referee, so the man wears many hats. Um, as a player, he played um, at uh, American River College yep. and uh, Bethany University. Yep. Uh, point guard, a uh, very high-level point guard, and we'll get more into that. Um, from there, for after he got out of school, uh, was Santa Cruz High, correct? Yeah, yeah. Santa Cruz, Coach at Santa Cruz S- High School. Coach at Santa Cruz yep. High School, and, and he was in Scotts Valley really helping the basketball culture there grow. And for anybody who – lives in Scotts Valley or Santa Cruz, you know, you know, necessarily the basketball culture there is, it's like you and Dixon, Mark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you help, know, yeah. You, you're trying to Needs make it, you're trying yeah. to create it. And, and he definitely left his mark out there. And, uh, That's you know, up. we got, we got, we want to add a lot of shine on that. Uh, just a very, very, uh, good man and a good historical fact. He was a part of the all black coaching staff at Pacific Union College. Yep. Uh, that was the first in history, correct? The first one. Okay. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, I didn't miss anything, but uh, you know, without uh, just my green M and M's. That's yeah, all I was oh asking for. Gosh, I know. <laughs> asking for that. He, he got green M and M's. He, he got a little bougie. I can't get my green M and M's. I'm a little bummed about. Well, that. true, but all without right. you know further ado, let's introduce uh, Coach Ted to the audience. You know, we're happy, happy to have him. Happy to have this guy here. Um, so Ted, t- t- tell us about you. Tell us a little bit about you and your journey. Well, I was born for my mom. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> um, no, nah, but for uh, let's see. I uh, started playing at five, nineteen eighty eight. The only reason why I know that is because my mom actually, uh, it's on my Instagram. Um, she sent me a picture of the Oakland Tribune, and uh, it had me at an after school program. Nice. And so oh. um, it had me watching somebody shoot. So that was the first time I saw myself play. Um, from there, met Kevin Johnson. He, him, and Manute Bowl came wow. and did like the what is it? The NBA cares for our school. Mm-hmm. So shout out uh, St. Leo's <laughs> and Piedmont. So uh, <laughs> Piedmont. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so he came in. Uh, they came and talked to us, and that was the first time I like really was serious about basketball at that point because I was like, okay, this guy and this guy can play basketball at a high level let me see what i can do with it right so uh fast forward to move to sacramento played a salvation army league um over in alhambra and broadway nice. so uh played there for man i think two or three years ended up uh playing junior high basketball at saint philomene um then went to Maryland high school we were actually good at Maryland high school we're not that good anymore uh but matador stand up so uh let's see after that, went to American River, played one year for uh, Mark Georgie. Mm-hmm. Shout, and, out, to, shout, uh, out, to shout out to Georgie. He's Mr. 94 feet. So <laughs> that's how I learned how to play defense. <laughs> he said, he, he said uh, uh, if you don't play, uh, pick up full court, you won't play. Yeah. I said, all right, cool. Ooh, so I that's like why that. I learned. Yeah. I like that. So all point guards have to pick up 94. So um, And then took four years off, ended up going to um, Bethany University, finished my degree, finished my playing experience. Love it. And then uh, got on to coaching right away on the women's side and the men's side, actually. So that's the fun fact. I did both. Yeah. And then I was just mostly player development at the time. Then ended up school shutting down in 2011, which was was terrible for our seniors. But um, ended up picking up, getting picked up at Santa Cruz High School. 
did that for three years, coached JV girls basketball with no point guard. So, wow. you know, all those coaches that say you need a point guard, <laughs> I respect it, but it's it's possible to do it without one. Um, and then my wife and I, we moved to uh, Sacramento because we want to be closer to home and uh, for, for where her family was. And uh, Pacific Union College, um, I saw them in Santa Cruz playing against UC Santa Cruz. They uh, talk, had a talk with a coach, and he was like, yeah, let's stay in touch, you know. And nice. so ended up having to make that trek. When I came up here, I was looking for a job, looking to stay in the four-year level, not really JUCO, uh, not really wanting to do high school. And then ended up getting picked up with PUC, and uh, that was a journey for sure because I had to drive an hour and 45 minutes wow. to practice. Wow. Uh, wow. Spent four years there. Right, so um, so four years of driving almost two hours. That's that's yes. dedication. <laughs> so in case yeah. you guys listening out there, especially you kids, they talk about, oh, I can't do it. I can't get in the gym. I can't. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> my, my man, my man's is driving right. two yeah. hours every yeah. day to be a college coach. Right, and um, and so you know, fortunate he, I, I thank him every single day that I was able to get on with him because he didn't have to do it. You know, he didn't have to put me on and. So spent four years there, then ended up um, coaching at YBA. That's when you recruited me to come over here. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> bro, it took me. <laughs> great, but I, let me tell y'all how long it took this man to to really, yeah, you know, come over to YBA because he started out at um, courtside, uh, uh, courtside, yeah. right? Okay. And yeah, and he's super loyal to a fault. I yeah. tell him this all the time. <laughs> I said you're super loyal to yeah. a fault, and it's a great thing. Because you guys know loyalty is big. Yeah. At least it's big for me, for sure. For sure. And it took me to recruit him like three, four years. I'm like, dude, leave courtside. They're yeah. not, they not going to grow you. They're not going to. And it's not that courtside itself is bad, but right. there's the, the guy that runs yeah. it and owns it is very, like, he's good with his bubble. Yes. And he doesn't want to expand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm fortunate enough. I mean, look where we're sitting. I'm fortunate enough to have this because yeah. Ken G allows me and believes in, in what true. I'm doing, right? Yep. You got to have somebody. This whole concept of you know i'm self-made i'm self-made it's yeah. bullshit someone yeah. has to believe in you somebody right. has to believe in you right? for sure and so i believe in him and the impact he's had on the women's basketball world. so it literally took me like three years of saying dude leave this leave this leave yeah. this come on man come on man yeah. come on man yeah, yeah. and finally he, he made that move to south beach and, okay. you know. <laughs> that's the, yeah that's the comparison for sure <laughs> brought his talents to yba yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's been history ever since man yeah, so um came over here, and then um, it was my first YBA team. It was a, a B team, and I had um, some girls on there that I just wanted to scrimmage against the girls that I knew out here. And um, one of the young ladies, Liz Gayweiler, who, like, she's like my little sister. Like, I love her to death. Um, she coached with me when I was at courtside with the Hot Shots Elite. And so um, she was she was there for that, like, open gym slash practice workout whatever you want to call it and uh the assistant coach for Jessup at the time Lexi Miller she was um she came to the open gym to play and so all the girl, what I normally have is all the girls they introduce themselves and talk about you know what they're about and all that yeah. stuff and so Liz gets up and says you know hey my name is Liz I played two years at Sierra and I got two years of eligibility left I'm still trying to figure it out right well that was like let me find out who this person is to Lexi right mm -hmm. so we did the introduction they talked to each other um, she ended up going over there to Jessup, um, but she really advocated for me, like nice. big time. She's like, "You got to get him over here too, because he's helped me a yeah. ton." And also, um, uh, a couple other people did too. Lily Haggerty, she did uh, as well. Um, cause I've been working with her in the summertime, so she, you know, said yeah. something about it too. So it was dope. Like I, I say it a lot all the time, but like I'm literally a byproduct of people saying yes. You know, not me nice. turning people away. So nice. um, it's been a blessing ever since then. So I've been adjusted for two years now, going on a third. And wow. we'll see if we can win this national championship anytime soon. Splash hey. on the championship. Okay. Let's, hey. let's get some drip on the championship. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, that what the kids talk about, Chris? <laughs> yeah, that's Spl what they talk drip about. On the, okay. Put some drip on it, right? right. Put some drip on it. You know, funny, fun fact. <laughs> I was just in my first TikTok today. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, oh, nice. My first one. Uh -oh. I, I haven't old. done TikTok yet. I haven't, I haven't either. Mark, have you done TikTok nah, yet? Nah, nah, I, nah. I feel nah. like. I haven't. I feel like that's just not for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Cool they were, yo, I'm, cool I'm going to send that. it to you. You're going to be like, yeah, I can tell it's not you. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm cool off that. Yeah. So I uh, think, Mark, I think you had the first question we wanted to throw at yeah, you. Yeah. So, you know, for me, you know, I've, I've just been starting into this 
development, you know, skills training. And, you know, I've been, I've been training a lot of uh, uh, guys, mm -hmm. you know, and not that I don't want to train females. Like I want to, it's just, you know, it's just everything that I've been showing, my videos and everything. That's just my clientele. And mm -hmm. now it's starting to grow. Mm -hmm. I'm getting more girls. Mm -hmm. And so one of my things that I want to ask you, just because I know, you know, you're, you're with your background and everything like that, you know, I, I'm all about getting more knowledge from yeah. other people is what's your best advice to when it comes to developing girls compared to guys? Is mm -hmm. there, is there a difference or is there no difference? I don't, Okay, so there's different ways to approach it, I think. But okay. um, you know, I think you have to be you. Okay. I'm me. I'm. I, I just do what I do. Um, yeah. But I, I definitely think you have to show women that you care. Um, and care for me is an acronym, right? So um, committed to the North Star, or whatever it is for them that they want to accomplish, whether yeah. that be like on the court or off the court, like just show that you care, right? Yeah. Um, have an amazing attitude because attitude is everything. Yeah. Um, be respectful of their background. So, you know, there's people come from different stuff and different situations, but um, they're respecting the fact that they have an opinion of how they feel their life should be lived out and then have empathy. Yeah. And so I kind of, I kind yeah, of we, we got to make that a t-shirt. Okay, bro. here we, we go. We got <laughs> Did you copyright that? I did, did not copyright it. So, uh, uh, what, well, he just property, did now. Go Don't nobody take that. that shit. I'm gonna claim that right now. It's been said, you know what I mean? That but, was really good. Yeah, Somebody yeah. gonna take it. Somebody <laughs> gonna take it. Watch. I thought about it. I thought Watch. about it a couple of times. But you know, it came from honestly that that word care came from um, last year. We we did um, a John Gordon book. Okay, um, and it was. Uh, the power of like one word basically and, and describing wow. your life in one word wow. and then being committed to that for that whole year. Yeah. And so, uh, that was my word, but I was like, okay, but how can I take that word and then make something more of it? Yeah. Right. And so I just acronymed it and that's what I try to live by. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Um, there's been so many athletes that I have that 10 years down the road that we're still like yeah. connected, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. being connected with them on that, showing them that you care, I think for long term, not just like what you can do on the court. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. going to be the biggest advice for sure. Okay. And I know you already do that, but yeah, like yeah. I double, triple that okay. for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then, so um, let's talk about, let's, let's change gears and let's put yeah. the different hat on. Yeah. Cause again, I mentioned he's a college referee. So let's talk about the ref side of things because yeah. you know, it's fun. Exactly. Can't wait. Because, well, because you're my first ref on here. And quite honestly, I want to get more referees yeah. on here because I know <laughs> I know it's a hard job. Yep. You know what I mean? And I really do try my best to be respectful to referees. Um, I think that's why most of them have a good rapport with me because I, I try to frame things in a question. Mm -hmm. I try not to yell unless they're like across that's the court. That's a lot, Chris. That's a lie. I, that's not Chris. a lie. I Chris. yell at my kids. I don't Chris. yell at refs. Chris. I yell at my kids. Chris. That's a lie. I like the shit out of my kids. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't All yell right. at refs. All right. Refs, I'll say I'll yell to get their attention. Right. Oh, you yell. I'm, so you do yell to get their attention. Oh. Yeah. How, how else am I supposed to do it? I'm like, I got a whisper. You I, yell, Chris. I yell like ref. You like, say it like that. Yes. Right, not, no, I don't no, say it like enough. no, that's I don't enough. say it like that because we're on a damn microphone. I'm not going to say, <laughs> <laughs> but I say rep, All right. right? And so, I want to get more of your guys' experience because it is a tough job. Yeah. Parents are assholes. Kids are sometimes <laughs> they're assholes. passionate. Chris, that's what we're describing. That's what y'all want to describe it. Okay. This about that life. We're gonna be here. Yeah, yeah. Parents are assholes. <laughs> all right. Not all of you, nope. <laughs> but a good amount of there's you. A, there's a lot of passionate parents. Yes, but let, yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, a lot of passion. Um, but I really do want to talk about your experience. So, in reference from, and you don't have to delve each one individually, right. but maybe you can give me an overall synopsis, like how you have to shift gears from when you're refing a high school game, because mm -hmm. I know you've ref all levels of high school, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and you ref a college game, mm -hmm. and then ref an AAU game, which could vary from third graders who can barely yeah. walk and chew bubble gum to yeah. super elite, you know, this kid's about to go pro. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. how I feel like your eyes have to change, your lens has to change. Yes. Because, mm -hmm. of course, you know, the physicality has to change. You know, maybe you can break more down to me. You let me know. Yeah, the the number one thing I got from mentors, because every referee has a mentor, mm -hmm. um, is make sure your calls fit the level of game you're calling. Right. Um, I'm not going to call specific fouls in a third grade game that I am going to call in a high school optimist game, mm -hmm. all-star game that right. guys are dunking and you know what I mean? Doing right. all that stuff. Like I'm not going to call those same calls. Um, so your calls have to fit the game. The biggest thing I've noticed 
that I struggled with initially was understanding the RSBQ. Yeah. That yeah, was the hardest I had thing to research to, that. Yeah. What's that? What's that? I don't so, know what that yeah. is. So rhythm, speed, balance, okay. and quickness. Uh, when you get into coaching, Mark, that's a big, like, RSBQ. that's how I approach it. Uh, yeah, because okay. okay. they help me to understand what refs are seeing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. Go, go, and if, if, it, if anything affects it, if a player affects it, then you got to make the foul call. Right. Mm, if it doesn't, okay. even if there's contact, yeah. you have to let them keep playing because okay. it didn't affect the RSBQ. And that's very wow. important. I hope pe- wow. people okay. hear that. That's interesting. It's mm-hmm. a contact sport. We all agree yeah. basketball is a contact yeah. sport, right? Mm-hmm. Too many parents think any level of contact no. is a foul. It's legal it's, it's and not. illegal contact. Right. It's okay. not because yeah. we understand, yeah. it's like, as, especially as basketball players, you're going to receive yes. some contact. Yes. So I hate. <laughs> even as a coach, even my own parents, when it's like a kid gets touched and they're like, that's a foul. I'm like, shut up. No, it's not. Yeah. Like, he didn't, I don't know. Right? Yeah. So, but my, my bad. Keep going, bro. No, it's, I mean, that's just, I agree 100%. And that was a hard transition for me, I would say, um, is understanding that based on the level. So you got a third grader who can't dribble the ball. If they get touched and they fall over, yeah, you're going to have to call that because mm. they don't have great balance, right? right. They, right. Don't, they don't have a rhythm of their game yet. So you call that. Um, Unfortunately, those games could take a long time, and a lot of people don't want to refer them. But I'm like, they still need good officials, right? right? So, right. Um, but you know, fortunately, I was able to do an NCAA game, and I appreciated you know my signer for putting me on. Um, that was that was difficult for me because I, even though it was like a D three game, mm-hmm. it still was like I'm doing an NCAA game. Like, and I had went from literally that year before doing freshman JV basketball to mm-hmm. then doing oh, college. Wow. Getting a, you know what I mean? That's so that was like jump. a crazy transition. So like, I that's the biggest thing that I saw the RSBQ thing. Like for different levels, you got to call calls that are unique to that like, age level you're doing. So yeah, no, yeah. that's good. I wow. mean, Mark, you got anything you want to? No, throw in I mean, like I said, I'm I'm just processing because that RSBQ. That's the first time I heard what that was. Yeah, I'm, I don't know what you guys were talking about. <laughs> yeah, like I said, yeah. you get in this coaching it's in the rule book too. Like, that's yes. the cool part. Yeah, like you get that. in the coaching world, you start. You know. It's funny because you know the whole contact, like you know, as you know, as you guys know, as trainers, like we yeah. teach how to initiate contact. Yep, you know what I'm saying to to get a shot off. So that's that's very interesting. Yeah, because so. mm-hmm. it has to be like a certain level of contact, yeah. right? Yeah, Cause, exactly. Because yeah. terms I say and my kids know it that I coach. I jokingly say it all the time, but it's the truth. Is you know you got to speak their language, right? Yeah. That's what that's my advice to all coaches. If you want, and you can and people see it on my instagram i talk about this crap all the time but it's like if you want to approach a referee to get at least a, a their them to look at something yeah. you have to speak their language yeah and mm. you can correct me if i'm wrong but the thing i always re- ask referees to look for is displacement yep. right impedance yep. and i think there's a third one i'm not think or uh, excessive contact yeah. or something like that yeah those are the three categories of let's say a foul yeah right my guy's dribbling down court mm-hmm He's allowed freedom of movement, yep. right? That's sure right. is. Isn't that the term? He's allowed freedom of movement. Yep. If a guy, boom, mm-hmm. displaces him, yeah. it's a foul. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's an easy foul. Yeah. But yep. it, but that's relative to the level mm-hmm. and the ref, right? That's because, it, you know, my fifth graders, right? Mm-hmm. Again, like you said, you kind of could bump him and he's going to fall yeah. over himself. Like, okay. But let's say you're talking about my 16 you guys that are mm-hmm. super yeah. physical and dunking yeah. everything mm-hmm. if they get bumped a little bit like yeah. get over it it's yeah. contact sport yeah. like you got to yeah. deal with that shit you yeah. know what i mean like that's, true. that's why i tell people go to a college game if yep. you really want to see Please do. physicality i mean yeah. nba is super physical too i'm tired yeah. of people thinking the nba so it's not soft yeah, yeah. it's it's called tighter but it's, it's not tighter, overall it's not soft it's yeah. not soft it's, at all. if you go to an nba game you see those guys are yeah 200 plus pounds yep. mm-hmm. hurting each other right. like mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like elite athletes yeah, yeah right like in the highest physical peak they yeah. fuck each other up yep. Yep. like you gotta know that so i guess that leads into my next point with you ted um you wear a lot of hats mm-hmm. very similar to me and mark yeah. you know mark's family man um runs his company and grinds his ass off every day yeah he's Damn sure becoming a really really good videographer. I, I be seeing trying, shit. yeah, trying. man. I, I see it too. You, you be <laughs> seeing, yeah. I be seeing the trying. GGT productions. Yeah. <laughs> At first, it started off with like this little, yeah. this little watermark logo, yeah. and now it's all like, whew. 
<laughs> Ooh, GGT. I'm, I'm waiting for some dude with a deep ass voice. Yeah, you know, like the guy, like the guy from Avengers. I, like, did, I just use high movies. I haven't, got, <laughs> you know what I mean? I haven't got to his level yet. All right, so. I'm waiting for like the Dragon Ball Z guy oh. on the next episode. Yeah. You know, I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting on repetition, that. Repetition, right, repetition, right? No, and, and it's like so. You wears a lot of hats. You know me. I yeah. wear a lot of hats. Yep. You clearly wear a lot of hats. How do you balance it? How does I don't. it work? You don't? No, 100% right. I don't. <laughs> okay. I just, exactly. uh, there's a there's a uh, book I haven't read yet, and it's by Trevor Moad, mm-hmm. and uh, it's called It Takes What It Takes. Right. And I like there that. was, I like that. I like that. Uh, the I like kind of the too. philosophy behind it was, um, I think he said he interviewed Vince Carter, and he, he was talking about like elite level players and how many guys you think are going to play pro and all this other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Vince Carter was like, you know what's funny is that all these young guys think they can just go out and do whatever and still stay professional, you know, and, and put up points and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. He was talking about, like, his experience. He can't dunk anymore as much because it takes him a long time to get down, yeah. which hurts his knees. Right. You know, he can't eat the same foods all the time. He just, yeah. like, it just, at the end of the day, it takes what it takes. Right. I'm not going to sit there and go out and do what they do because yeah. I know I can't perform at the level that I need to, what my team needs, right? So to answer the question, like, it, I don't have balance, you know, okay. and uh, <laughs> so, um, but I do what I have to do in order to get what is necessary. Nice. You know what I mean? So to get shit done. Yeah. At the end of the day. So, um, you know, for me, it's like I, I, I want, there's things that I do want to do though. I want to be around my son more because I mean, growing up in a single family home and yeah. all that stuff, yeah. like I want to be, I want him to grow up with his dad around more. Right. Um, but the, the ill part about it is that he's grown up with both parents. And so like, mm-hmm. that's the trade off for me is like, I'm still able to get some stuff done, mm-hmm. but he's also growing up with both mom and dad. Nice. And so like that to me is a win for sure. Yeah. So that's kind of how I, I guess you could say, uh, think about it, you know? Yeah. No, um, this is great. Um, I guess then the last thing is, you know, what's the end game? What's, what's mm-hmm. the goal? Where, what, what's, Tech gonna be ten years from now, okay. five years from now. What, what, so, what we got? I haven't, I haven't, I don't have my doctorate degree, so I'm not gonna go <laughs> super crazy into it. But uh, um, you know, it, for me, it's what's really important is, especially for for uh, African Americans, um, is that we have infrastructure for stuff. Yes. Um, you know, I would love to say that. You know, I want to. I originally started. I went to coach with USA Basketball. Like that was a big thing for me, just because I got a chance to see people that I train and work with, uh, people that are family for me, um, end up playing with USA basketball. So that's dope, you know, but yeah. like I said, well, okay, what does all that stuff do? You know, at the end of the day. And so, especially in these times of what's going on with, you know, businesses looking to give money to black organizations. Um, I'm like, where's our infrastructure so that that money goes somewhere so we can help, you know? Um, and so, like, that's, at the end of the day, it's kind of what I'm interested in right now um, is making all these connections so that there's avenues for young athletes or young black people to, to be able to kind of filter into. Um, mm-hmm. Because if that's not the case, then I feel like my life is, it hasn't done what it needed to get done while I was here. You know, right. so I just want to make it better for my son and yeah. for his kids if he has some. Uh, so that's kind of the end game. But as far as basketball wise, like USA basketball would be nice. No, nice. just because that's like I rationalized it before it, the platform is the pros got a trial for USA basketball. Mm-hmm. So like even though NBA, WNBA is great, like yeah. USA basketball is above that. Yeah. Like people got to try out, you know. That's and true. so I don't know what capacity that would be, but I would love to work with USA basketball. Okay, that would be nice. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I, like I mean, the- I mean, you know, with current events going on right now and, you know, the way basketball and sports training everything's had to be adjusted yeah. obviously mainly speaking to covid yeah. you know what i mean because it's everywhere and yeah. it's just going to be a part of our lives i think at least for the next year or two or yeah. couple years um you know what can you tell me if if you research or any little bit of what you think and obviously same with you mark is mm-hmm. you know how how has covid affected uh women's college basketball i mean you know have, has there been protocols in place? Is there going to be a season? Are they yeah. planning on starting it later? No preseason? I mean, anything. Yeah. Like, what What have you found out? So we keep hearing a bunch of different stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what I do know uh, is that most of the NCAA, NAIA, they've shortened the seasons. Um, by what percentage is kind of like in debate still. They've thrown some numbers out there. 
but uh, it's still in debate of what they're going to do. Um, I think you can expect between six to eight games less, you know what I mean, at least. Um, so you're talking about going into December-ish or January maybe even, you know, depending yeah. on how many preseason games you get. I know for NEI we get 32 games uh, at least. We get to get for maximum. That's games played as well as scrimmages and um, exhibitions, right? So we'll get at least 32, but it could be reduced, you know what I mean? And there's been some numbers that have been thrown out, but again, it's nothing in stone yet. Um, and then I know NCAA, at least D- D2, they had a percentage re- reduction as well. Um, but again, all that stuff could be, that could change, like yeah. literally in the next month. And it could be like, oh, we're going to go back to normal. Everything is good. Like, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen, but you yeah. just don't know, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, but there's been a reduction on a lot of stuff. And so for a lot of players, they're just like, what am I going to do? Like, this really sucks. And I'm like, well, that's great, but you can only control what you can control, you know? So get in the gym, stay in the gym. Literally it. Train. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Outside. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah. So like, there's going to be a reduction in games, uh, for sure. Um, and I would, I would, I would be hard pressed to not think they would, uh, not have conference games. Cause there's some like super conferences out there. that got like 14 teams. Yeah. So you're playing 26 games right there, you know? Uh-huh. So I, I, I would say at least conference. I don't know what the JUCOs are doing cause they've flip flopped and they've tried to figure stuff out. Um, but yeah, I would say, uh, at least, you know, six to eight games is probably going to be, be how, awesome. how, how is, um, has that affected recruiting? Because I know yeah. you work on that side, so it has. Okay. It definitely has. Because everybody's, you know, afraid of the what what uh, isn't going to happen. They don't know, you know, what what's what's going to happen. So for them, it's a difficult thing to, you know, say yes, I'm going to sign up and play for you, but I don't know if I'm going to get a season. And uh, that's that's I can understand it. And we tell them like we get it, you know, but. Um, you know, are we only doing that for hoop or we want to graduate too? Right. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of the real big thing. And they just happen to play basketball and you get a discount on your education. But like, it's really about like graduation. That's really what it's about. And job placement, if that's what you want. Cause like, right. what the reality is you're going to probably get four or 5% of girls that play past college. Yeah. That's the reality. So 95% of y'all are not going to play <laughs> pro. Like that's yeah. fine. And it's probably even worse for the boys. <laughs> yeah. Like you can go and make six figures easy. Yeah. Right. But you like, it doesn't mean that you're not a professional with something else. It yep. just means that you're not playing basketball or you can just hoop on the weekends or play semi pro or mm-hmm. do something. You know what I mean? You have options, but don't think because you don't play pro, like all of a sudden you're a, yeah. you're a failure. Like that's, that's actually the opposite. So, yeah. um, but yeah, so that's why I try to encourage a lot of the girls, especially anybody listening to like, it's, you're going there to get a discount on an education, whether that's a hundred percent, 50%, whatever the nice. number may be, like you're getting term. a discount on education, yeah. you know? So, yeah. um, no, that's good. Yeah, That's what we tell them. No. And I like that. So yeah. if you want to come to Jess up, you know, Hit me up. <laughs> you know, yeah, we got roster yeah. spots. So let there me you know. go. <laughs> Splash for Jess. Yeah. <laughs> no, that makes sense. No, man. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I like that because, and I like the terms you're using and and the things you're saying because, you know, yeah, and that, that well, that's piggybacks on the last thing I want to ask you too was, um, mm-hmm. you know, you're a college coach. Mm-hmm. You know, we as as train, and that's kind of the great part, unique part with your side, like. Uh, me and Marcus trainers, you know, even just guys who played high level, play college, whatever, yeah. cumulatively, like we could tell these young men and women all the time, like this is what college coaches are looking for. This is what college coaches, and yeah. it's it still feels like sometimes they think we're bullshitting. Them, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. So since he is a college coach, I yeah. want y'all to hear yeah. like this is what a college. So yeah. I tell my guys, there's typically three things yeah. that a college coaches are looking for. One is uh, coachability. Yep. Right. Um, uh, two is uh, attitude. Yep. Right. Which I get, you know, circles back into coachability, but it's mainly, but you know, that's all, uh, uh, all uh, together. Yeah. And then the third thing is IQ. Yeah. You know, even even before the athleticism, the, mm-hmm. the skill ability. I'm I, you know, I'm like most of college coaches I talk to, they they can see what you can do. They can see mm-hmm. the highlight tapes. Like no one yeah. makes a highlight tape of 20 turnovers like so yeah everybody <laughs> everybody's do, gonna you should look not great. go play like, college they, basketball right you say that right now you should stay playing right. men's league yeah. you know what I mean? you're highlighting your turnover you're shacking the fool and you're exactly the coaches, <laughs> you're an idiot <laughs> like but i'm saying like you know what do you what what are three things as a college coach that you look for you know um so 
I heard uh, Gino kind of talk about this a little bit, and he said he doesn't coach effort. Mm-hmm. He said, you're at Connecticut because I don't have to coach effort, mm-hmm. right? And that was like a bar for me because I was I like, like, yo, that's that. crazy. You know what I mean? I, I didn't like think that. about that. So I, I just translated to price of admission. Like, yeah. there are certain things that I'm looking for that at the ground level I can at least work with it. And it doesn't have to relate to skill set, right? So, yes, 100% effort. Like, whenever you're in there for the minutes that you're in there for, I did a, I posted it, I think, on my Twitter. And I was like, I played 19 hours total of basketball, like countable basketball. Right in college, that's from at least from at Bethany. I don't know what I did at AR because right. we just didn't keep records, or I don't know something didn't happen. I don't know, whatever. But um, nineteen total hours. So I played less than one full day of basketball, right? But I made every single minute count when I did play. So I let them know like one hundred percent effort is mandatory. You can't argue with me on that, right? Um, ability to work well with others, right? So being a part of the whole, yeah. not just being the individual. Like I. It's hard for me to coach players who are uh, very selfish and not selfish to be selfless, but like selfish for themselves. They only want everything for themselves, you know. Um, And last thing thing is ability to compete. Like, so that's a hard thing to teach. Right. Um, But like things should matter to you. Like, and I go back to that word care. Like you should just care about doing your best all the time against somebody else and wanting them to do their best against you. And if you don't get that, you should be upset. Yeah. So I, for me, those are the three things. It has nothing to do with you actually putting the ball in the basket, right? And I can tell basically by somebody running on the court what they do. Yeah. yeah. So. No, it makes sense. It makes um, a lot of sense. Yeah. Right. So, and I, um, this is a topic that I kind of just wanted us three to talk about a little bit too. Yeah. Um, I talk about the infinite game versus the finite game. Okay. You have um, to explain that to me. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Brother. I got you. Um, I um, Chris come up, come up with uh, philosophies. I mean, need you to go to school for that. <laughs> well, that was that was my minor. Okay. <laughs> right. All right. That was my minor. <laughs> Social science emphasis on philosophy. Okay. So right. you know, brother got a little bit of education. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. <laughs> no. Um, Biggest thing, uh, I, the infinite game versus the finite game. Yeah. I feel like we're all in the infinite game. And mm-hmm. what that means is, quite simply, we're in it forever. We're in it for the long yep. haul, right? right. We, okay. we want this to be a legacy we can leave behind for others, and it can keep going, keep going, keep going, right? Our kids are essentially our legacy, right? Um, but even then, we still want things. You know, I think most people in this world want something that will be remembered. Yep. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be super big. It could be something small. It doesn't matter. But we typically want something we'll be remembered by. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. For sure. And uh, there's those who are in the finite game. Okay. And, the you know, the finite game ends. Basically, uh, uh, Aristotle created this concept, and Simon Snick is a great motivational speaker. I, I listen to him all the time. Yeah. He kind of evolved into it. So I'll do the quickest, quickest version. Basically, it just comes down to, like, he said this story of Apple and Windows, right? Apple yeah. and Windows. He said Apple's always pretty much the leader in all electronic everything. Yeah. Computers, yeah. phones, everything, yeah. right? Um, Android's always tr- – Windows and them are always trying – Microsoft's always trying to beat Apple, yeah. right? Which doesn't and make any sense ex- if you think about it. Like exactly. They could be them, themselves. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. right? And, and that's the difference with the finite or the yeah. infinite and the finite game. Infinite game, we're always competing with ourselves. Okay. Exactly. Right, like I'm always trying to. Think, how can I be a better trainer? How can yeah. I be a better coach? Yep. And of course, you have what's called the friendly rival. The friendly rival is someone you look at and you, it, it it motivates you to be better. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. That's yeah. the that's the concept of the friendly rival. Yeah. Yep. Right, where it's not destructive to you, but you can't help but like, yes. like fuck, I want to be better than you. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. I want to be better than you, but at the same time, I still respect you yes. too damn much. You know what yes. I mean? Like, and the friendly rival's healthy. Yeah, yeah, that's healthy, but pure rivalry, hatred, rivalry—that's when it's destructive, right? Yeah. To yourself, not yeah. not because because now you're fixated. Because again, your windows, you're fixated on beating Apple mm-hmm. instead of being great. And guys who understand the infinite game is, I, like today's a great example. Just had the AU tournament, right? Yep. At Corsair, you won everything. So shout, I didn't win everything. Shout out shout to Chris out. for winning everything. Shut up! I didn't win everything. <laughs> right? So. Phil Collins, I mean, I mean <laughs> <Ben> Master. <laughs> so must be nice. Shut up. Okay. And so I um my three of my teams won, right? Okay. But my fifth grade took yeah. some L, right? Yeah. Took an L. And you know, there's this expectation 
that all my teams always win. They should win. They always win. They always win. Do. Shut up. But I'm just, I'm just uh, going but off it, of what I see on uh, Instagram. Okay, Chris. Fair, fair enough. All right. You you see it as a ref too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and so, but what I try to explain to coaches and other people is I'm in it for the infinite game. Yep. My fifth graders are developing. Right. Yes. And they ch- and when they first got to me, they were really bad. Yeah. They're now yeah. competing at the highest level. We're now in the elite level brackets and we're competing. Now, of I course, I lost that. some players along the way. Of course. Gained yeah. a few couple high level players, but now we're building. We're building, yes. right? So yeah. then when you see them come 7th, 8th grade, ninth grade year, which you've seen me do for years. Religiously. Right. <laughs> then they're <laughs> like, like you know, people are like, where this random fucking talented yeah. ass kid coming? And they're like, oh, he been with Coach Chris since 4th oh, grade. Yep. Like, you no, know. Showing up every day. And, and again, <laughs> What I accept is and know is there's going to be times, there's going to be periods where my team suck. Yeah. They're going to get blown out by 30 or 40. Yeah. They're not going to be that good. Yeah. And But I'm in it for the infinite game. Yeah. Right? So while the coach is over there cheering and hooting and hollering super like, yeah, we got him, we beat him, we beat him. Yeah. And then I play that same coach with the same team two years later and yep. he can never beat me ever mm. again. He's wondering <laughs> how did that happen? Yeah. yeah. How yeah. did that happen? I'm saying because I'm in it for the infinite game, dog. Yeah. You're in it for the finite. You just yep. won a game. You won one yep. game in fifth grade yep. that got you a, a, ten, a, a 10 cent medal. That, so. <laughs> Don't get me started, Chris. Right? That, that, man. So it's like, okay, congratulations. Me, I'm in it to develop these guys for the infinite game so yeah. that when they're on their signing day for college, they're ready to go. Yeah. So I was just curious what you guys' thoughts on kind of that whole concept. For me, it's funny that you said because ever since you've brought in that up, I remember I saw it on your story. And I, I actually, like I said, I'm, I'm a type of person, like I soaked that up. I started doing my research when, you mm-hmm. know, when you put that. And I've been using it. And when you, for example, when you talked about the friendly rivalry, mm-hmm. that's exactly what I do in a lot of my group sessions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So with some of my top guys, yeah. like I kind of, I kind of instigate in a way, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. hey, you, you know, this guy, he's been putting in a lot of work. Like, hey, I need you to make this shot. Or, hey, if we're going to go ones today, he's been beating you the last couple of weeks. Mm. Like, you know, and it kind of sparks something, you know what I'm saying? And then so I do that a lot. But then when you talk about the whole, you know, of course, I'm not a coach, but like last year, you know, when Marcus started doing the open runs, yeah. I, would, I would always, you know, Marcus always likes to stack his team. Oh, you know? yeah. like he'll play. Yeah, yeah, oh, he yeah. do? Yeah. He do like stack his team? Shots fired to Marcus. Yeah, he yeah. Stop stacking your team, Marcus. Yeah, dude. You know, he got his pro guy. He gets ah, shots yo. fired, Marcus. I'm going to reload that. <laughs> Mark, Marcus always got his pro and college guys. <laughs> he gets lobbed to everybody. Yeah. I'm like, okay, see, yeah. all right. Yeah. So, you know, last year, you know, when I first, you know, I was – in this area for the first time I met Marcus, you know, I, and of course, remember, I'm from Dixon. Right. Well, I'm not from Dixon, but where a lot of my kids are from that area. Right. I would take all my high school kids to his runs. Okay. You know, I would play too, you know what I'm saying? Just to kind of, you know, coach and play at the same time. We would get our ass whooped, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. that's the thing, like the whole infinite game. I, mm-hmm. Even though, of course, I want to win, you know, that's why I would try to play, you know, yep. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? But, yep. but I knew that for them to get beat on like that, and go back to their high school teams playing against mm-hmm. college and pro guys. The same kids that I have now that are going to his open runs now this Killing summer. Now. Look at the film. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> look at the film. Yeah. I got shout, my, shout out to GGT. GGT. I, I, got, I got my kids, you know, going 94 feet at an open run. Love it. Some of the older guys are like yeah. laughing. Love That's it fine. You know what I'm saying? Going five in a row. Yeah. Like, these are high school kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's because I took them last year. And I remember yeah. Marcus, he'd be like, man, stop bringing your high school guys, man. I was like, nah, bro. Yeah. Like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So now it's like you see that because, like I said, the same mindset of what you're talking about is like, you know, I'm not I'm not really tripping about, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to lose. My guys are going to get their butt whooped because I'm mm. talking to them, reminding mm. them about the long game. Mm. Yep. You know, so now it's like they're confident like oh when are you gonna take me to another marcus open run yeah like, all right every monday after we get our work in during the week i'll take you so that's so that's why you know what I'm saying when you talk about the whole infinite game and everything like that like i've actually been taking that to heart of just you know what i kind of what i want to do with my players and everything like that so yeah that's what i think about it i what love about, it what about you tetris uh yeah so let me think there was a quote that i that i heard um so we're reading a book called uh chop wood carry water as a team bro you read a lot of books i don't <laughs> chris i'm gonna need you to let me be great right you now. right i am gonna right. let you be great you you are. shout out i should get some pay i should get paid from these books that i'm recommending <laughs> to you while we're at it but uh, i know right but uh so yeah chop wood carry water is we're reading this book um by uh 
forgot the gentleman's name, but um, for the YBA team. Mm -hmm. And it talks a lot about the process, right? Right, right. And about how everything that you do needs to be intentional. Um, everything you do needs to make sure that it has a purpose and that you don't skip any steps. And I think that's that's where I am in my life right now. Um, but the ill part about it is there was a quote that said, nobody gets to the top of the mountain by accident. Right, like nobody falls to the top of the mountain. You have to take every single step, Love like it. as carefully as you can, be mm-hmm. as intentional as you can. Um, and so that's what we've been trying to do. That's that's the long, the super long game for sure. And like I said before, like I'm committed to what what is she going to be ten years from now yep. when she's out of school, working her job. I had a kid that actually hit me up. Oh, man, I coached her for two seasons in a rec tournament or no rec league in Santa Cruz. Right. And she was ninth grade and 10th grade at the time. So she hit me up. She texted me and she's like, hey, I didn't know if this is your number or not, but I just want to let you know, like those two times you coached me. I learned more from that than my D row crew team, D one crew team. And she I forgot where she went to to college is somewhere in the pac 12 but she was she was doing crew which is basically rowing um and she said she learned more in those two years than she had learned ever from any coach that she's ever had and i was like that's the testament to the like playing the long game for sure like the stuff you're teaching them they might not be ready for it right there yeah. but like now she's going to be a nurse like she's going to i think she's going to uh what's the name of that that school pen medical school i think for some um first from something for nursing i think or something like that so um yeah like those moments is what i live for not nice. the not the we win our rec tournament <laughs> like that's great <laughs> we win yeah. it like we get the little medal it's you know a dollar yeah. 57 that's the, that's the like, trophy chasing yeah, yeah but like the fact that she calls me up or hits me up 10 years from like that's dope to me you know that's, that's what i do that's powerful that's what i do i um so we're gonna go into our to our more controversial uh, oh, segment, no. right? Yeah. This is the yeah. first. Chris, stuff. Chris I'm going to let you know this is right now. I'm Switzerland. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> so, um, of course you I'm, are. I'm a, I'm a of great course you are. Guy. That's fine. You be Switzerland. <laughs> okay. I'll be. I'll be uh, North Korea. Oh god. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and we've been banned. <laughs> <laughs> the FBI is going to be right. coming in right now. Thanks, Chris. Exactly. Thanks. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so. Okay, the biggest thing. First topic, fellas. Let's talk about it. Why does the WNBA suck? Wow. And Damn. I don't think it sucks, so let me make that very clear. I have a daughter. <laughs> I'm invested in hoop. My daughter's probably going to be 6'5". So, <laughs> She's coming uh, to William Jessup. Yeah. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm good with that. But, you know, there there is this stigma of the WNBA sucks, and you are a woman's coach, and I want your perspective on it because – Again, you have a heavy influence in the, yeah. that world. You have an, an amazing young group AAU team that you're working with right now. Yeah, they're um, a work in progress for sure, man. Yeah, and um, and you're playing them at 17U level, which yeah. is crazy. Like yeah. wow. like Harper's out there. Like, yeah. let me throw a splash for Harper. Oh, man. You know, that's stick. Gra- that's AKA stick. grandma. Yeah, yeah. That slow ass stick. <laughs> that's my girl. But you know, uh, she's um. No, I mean, what you do is there is 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 very amazing. And but you know, with the again, when I mean the word suck, mm-hmm. I mean overall. Like, why does not generate revenue? Why is it not mm-hmm. getting the fan base? Why is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the question I'm posing to you guys. Like, because yeah. I don't think it sucks. Yeah. It's just I'm just saying the overall term. And before we get into, it, let me just throw a few numbers out there, just so we get our minds and context right. So, mm-hmm. right now, currently. Uh, the highest grossing player in the WNBA uh, is uh, Dewana Bonner, right? And okay. she grosses 127,000, 127,500,000, right? Uh, Steph Curry gets 34 million. <laughs> Clearly, drastically different. <laughs> right. yeah. Drastically different, okay? But let's go to attendance, okay. right? Because like, again, I don't this is, even though this is a podcast is opinion pieces. Let's put some numbers. Let's put some facts to some real shit. Let's okay. just okay. WA attendance per game. Okay, WA attendance per game is six thousand five hundred and thirty-five. Mm-hmm. Right, and this is just right. overall average. Yep. Average and uh, average attendance for NBA games is seventeen thousand seven hundred and fifty per game. Uh-huh. Okay? Eyeballs like, and let's also talk about ways we could potentially fix this. 
right? Like, like not. I mean, we'll probably agree for some stuff, disagree with some stuff, but yeah. maybe we can come up with a couple solutions and yeah. just talk about it. So, yeah, what do you think? Um, what I well, I, know, I I understand what you're saying by it sucks. Um, what sucks for me is that more men aren't involved mm. as a fan, not as a um, somebody who takes their daughters to the game, like take your sons to the game as well yeah. to see strong women compete right because your mother is strong mm-hmm. she competes every single day when she works like you're just supporting another avenue of that um i had an opportunity in 2006 and 2007 to or 2007 2008 actually to be on the scout team for sacramento monarchs which was a great opportunity wow. um i met a lot of great people during that time and the the part that was that stuck out to me the most why I went into women's side even heavier was because I saw the work that they put in every single day. And that was with Tisha Pinachero. Uh I think she's all time no, Sue Bird's all time assist leader, but like she's top three assist leader. Um uh Rebecca Brunson, um Yolanda Griffin, like Hall of Famers, you know what um, I mean? Like very very good players um nicole powell who's actually at uh who's at grand canyon university now she's at i believe it's uc riverside now um like just really really good players and i watched it every day and i was like why one do no men know about this Mm. right and the men that were there were um they're interesting people um Just put it that way. Uh, you know, I think some of that had to do with, you know, they saw you see strong females that can, can, that can go. And so you're trying to holler at them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, nah, per- respect their profession. Yeah. You know, they, they're they out here working. This is not a time to get at them. Yeah. You know you're what right. I mean? We're trying to help right. them prepare for the next game. <laughs> yeah. They just want, got done winning a championship two years ago. Like, we don't need to be getting at them right. on the court. We need to be helping them. Um, but seeing them, like, work out and play. And Chris had a chance to go with me multiple times to that. Yeah, so. I remember when we did those Friday. Yeah, he was, was not like, one of those interesting guys. No, no, no. I kept things real cool. No, yeah, they, they, no, they came at me, man. They, oh, yeah. yeah. Bro, we went to the Monarch Friday. Oh, I swear. Okay. It, was, it was Yolanda was guarding Yolanda, me for yo. me. <laughs> Bro, she's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, uh, yeah. throwing her elbow in my chest. And, and don't I, care. And right? And didn't give no fuck. Out too. She was like, like smooth out. I ain't gonna lie, though. I lit their ass up a few times. I had hella threes on. They was getting hella mad. You they, did. They, they, they didn't have no f- centers that could shoot three. Right. All right. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> It's like who just random light skin motherfucker. Yeah. yeah, I was like, bro, but that no, nah, them yeah. girls could play, man. They could okay. play. Real took, talk. I, there was one situation I always talk to Tisha about this, or I used to like, comment about it all the time. But we were running a, a late game situation, and she was on the left side of the court, and so normally she will back you down, turn, and go off a ball screen, right? So she the same thing got me to a certain point, like on the wing. Turned her head like she's going to use the screen. I went for it. I'm almost at half court, like, trying to jump the screen. Yeah. She gets all the way to the basket, drop it off. They win the game. Ooh. Everybody went crazy on me, right? Ooh. And I was like, okay, at that point, yeah. <laughs> I need to check myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I thought I was Mr. 94 feet. I can right. pick you up. Right, I can turn right. you. Yeah. And so I give her that out all the time. I'm like, she's the only person that I know, male or female, that took me like that. Like, Ooh, okay. took me out of my shoes for yeah. sure. Yeah. And so, like, that. that's when I knew, though, like, that more men have to support yeah. the women's side of things mm-hmm. um, and and that we need to have more advocates for it. So I think that's one of the reasons why. Um, I think, too, well, the next generation coming up, um, shout out to Jiggy Izzy, actually, because she's uh, – I've been in communication with her for the last couple of years, her and her brother Marco. Wow. Um, she's, like, she's part of a new generation – of women's basketball players yeah. i would say three four years from now yeah. that those numbers are gonna go way up because everybody's sure. watching women's basketball the younger sure. girls are getting better um and the nba kind of went through the same exact thing yeah. you know they had had to get younger and cause they yeah. had a lot of older guys in it right so that's um true. i think that's going to happen now for sure in the women's side um so i think that's part of the reason why i think when the WNBA started in 97 it was like okay this is cool but like we don't know how to take this uh and you know WNBA being after 20 years they figured it out and they said, okay, we got to get appeal to a younger market. Yeah. And so now they, they're doing that. But I, I think the male support has to happen more. So I, I think something that I want to touch on is, you know, rest in peace to Kobe. He started planting seeds. You know, I feel like, you know, Absolutely. especially before his death, like, Absolutely. I think that's what really, you know, like you said, three to four or five years from now, yep. you know, he was really just a big advocate, you know, with yep. his daughter, not just with his daughter. Like he went straight into coaching girls. 
you know. So and and he trained them, you know, just studying him. He he a lot of his philosophies he did with his AU team with his girls. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I think um that that's big um for sure knowing that somebody like that, you know, um just really was passionate about that. And and the crazy part about it is like NBA players they support WNBA like crazy, they do. They do. right? They do. But the common fan does not, yeah. right? You know, and so like they they can only do so much because they're focused on themselves. Right. Um but like if you, if you watch you know, NBA players supporting going to the games, yeah. rocking their jerseys, all that stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. same exact thing. I literally went, I think it was on uh, either Women's Slam or Overtime or something like mm-hmm. that. But um, there was a bunch of people on in the comments going crazy. And I'm responding to all of them. Cause I'm like, I'm not about to let y'all just go crazy <laughs> yeah, on the WNBA yeah, or the yeah, basketball yeah, game. Yeah. It got to a point where I, maybe they thought I was like spam. You yeah. know what I mean? They, <laughs> they said, oh, you can't, you can't give me more comments. You know right, what I mean? I was like, right. I was like literally defending everybody. Cause I'm nice. like, no, that's not right. Yeah, like they were talking yeah. about, you know, uh, get in there, make sandwiches. Oh, you know what I mean? Like all that crazy ignorance. stuff. And I was like, oh, are y'all serious? Yeah. Y'all talk to your moms that way? Yeah, for real. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. that's in essence what you're doing, yeah, right? Yeah. And like, you're, if you have a daughter, did your daughter know you talk about women that way? Like it's yeah. it's crazy. I, I go to when I used to go to an open gym at courtside. I used to bring four women every single time, right? Because right. one, I knew that the men were not going to pass to them. Yeah. I was going to do that, yeah, right? Yeah, and we would yeah. go out there and whoop people all the time, hey. not because yeah. I'm doing anything, but because yeah. they are. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so the number one thing you hear: you got beat by a girl. Don't let her shoot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She's not that good. Like mm-hmm. normal stuff, but like it would be sexist, not mm. off not a ba- skill not, set. Yeah, not basketball. You know what I mean? Like you let this girl talk, beat you up, like. She can hoop though, like yeah. she plays D one. Like, what yeah. do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, she yeah. doesn't suck. Exactly. So it's it's that's part of the. I think we're in a male dominated society. One, but in athletics, like we think higher, faster, stronger is all with men, and that's just not the reality. You know, okay. women are just as yeah. swift and fast. And I guess, stuff. well, I guess for me, and my whole take from all of it is, you know, you, you got to reconstruct how we approach the WNBA, right, and. I think I'm going to say some shit that some people, especially if some women hoopers hear this, probably might disagree with. But I, it's just my personal opinion. And let me make that clear again. My personal opinion, okay? Right. doesn't reflect anyone else but what I've assessed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple things that need to happen. Uh, one, it's got to be um, – it's got to be more approached – it's got to be more approached with a business mindset. Sure. and. And because that's what the NBA is. Yeah. At the end of the day, it is a business. Yes. Of course, I certainly believe there's some cheating going on sometimes, like because yeah. it gives more market value. I, hey, I believe it. I'm yeah. sorry, I do. And do I think it happens all 82 games? Absolutely not. But right. you you do look at that Sacramento Kings, Lakers. Uh, <laughs> what, what what was it? Um, 2001 or oh, no? It was it 2001 or 2002? But it was. It was. It was we like, know when it was Vlad EC. Well, yeah. I mean that shit. It's they, been proven too. They cheated. Yeah, Straight up, <laughs> and and that's because obviously there's more market value in L.A. than Sacramento. Mm-hmm. That's sure. just that's just the numbers. Um, sure. So when I look at the WNBA, I'm like, okay, you got to reassess this as a business. To me, if they focus more on the W and less on the NBA, mm-hmm. um, it would be successful. And let me explain that. What I mean by that is, and this again. This is just my opinion. This is stuff that's on average. This is stuff statistically proven. On average, it's say it's safe to say men are bigger, faster, stronger. Period. I mean, let's really break down what basketball requires. It requires athleticism, speed, power, strength, agility, right? Mm-hmm. On average, men are better at that than women. Mm-hmm. Not speaking on I'm not saying all. I said on average, right? So we have women playing a sport that inherently their bodies just aren't built for, right? right? For the average woman, okay? I think if you adjust some things to make it fit more of a woman's physiology, mm-hmm. right, she can then perform better. And i give you guys a tangible example. I think if they shorten the court up mm-hmm. by five feet, mm-hmm. five, maybe eight feet, mm-hmm. you get more fast break play. They move faster. They look quicker. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like when you put third graders on a big 94 foot court. Sure. It it just doesn't look right. It looks too slow, way too much because their bodies are too small. You know what I mean? But then you go like, you know, a court side, they have that little kid court, but you put them on that little kid court. Mm -hmm. It just looks aesthetically Mm -hmm. more pleasing, more normal. Okay. Okay. 
I think they should lower the rim. It's another thing I think. I think they should lower it to nine feet. Not even speaking on college. I'm right. talking about pros because it's a business, right? Okay. Imagine how many more people watch if Brittany Grimer was drop step dunking on chicks every fucking night. Okay. Do that. That's just. But can she do that on ten feet? No. Not not to say she can't dunk at all. That's clearly not the case. She can, okay. but she needs a certain circum certain mm-hmm. circumstances to do it consistently. Okay. Right? I need a fast break, full head of steam. Nobody in front. Imagine if the rim's eight and three fourths or nine feet. Mm-hmm. She's drop step dunking every night. There's a few girls drop step dunking every night, okay. and of course, there's the anomalies of these girls that are super athletic. They're coming out there. Yeah. You see them more and more. Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about let's take away from that and just look at the business. Okay. If I'm an owner, and now my short, my, my I'm getting more fast breaks because the court's smaller. I'm getting more dunks and more athletic ESPN top ten moments. Mm-hmm. That's when you get TV contracts. That's when you get more shoe deals. That's yeah. when you get more people in the stands because it's not just fans, okay. right? NBA makes more of their revenue from the te- television contracts yeah. than they do necessarily people in the stands, yeah. right? That's where the, that's how the stadiums make money, yep. right? And these are just a couple of venues in way I think you know whether you got, you know if guys agree or disagree. Here's another controversial one that I think, and this is again my personal opinion. They have to cut out. They have to cut out too much of the LGBTQ community stuff. And I know again, that's like a, a controversial topic. Right. I'm not to have anything against it. Don't care really right. personally. Anybody's sexual preference is totally on them. Don't right. care. What I'm saying is, at your sporting events, right? Think about what Colin Kaepernick did. He kneeled at the very beginning of a, the football game, and that's it. That's the only. Silent protest he did. Yeah. And it was a fucking shit storm. <laughs> like, yeah. off of this. I mean, we're talking, everybody's coming about, about screw Kaepernick, burning his jerseys. Sure. We hate him, right? Sure, sure. I've been to WNBA games. Mm-hmm. I've been to Monarchs games. I've been to other games myself. Um, uh, in L.A., the Sparks. I've yeah. been I've been to their games because I'm a, 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 a Candace. Um, why am I not thinking of her last name? Parker. 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 I'm a Candace Parker fan. She's yeah. super pretty, by the way. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to Candace Parker. That's yeah. I don't know what happened right. with her and Sheldon. All right, man, all right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, bro, how? Yeah. How? Know, That's man. so many questions. How, yeah, how did you pull that, bro? You got to help me. That's you got to fill mama. me in on that. Yeah. One. That's his baby mama, right? All right for yeah. how? Like how? But either way, shout out, shout out to Sheldon. Good, 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 good pickup, bro. <laughs> oh <my laughs> but, <God. laughs> but no, like. I've been to those games, yeah. and I enjoy the games, the games. But I don't know if you guys have noticed or if you've seen it. I mean, it, it's a heavy emphasis on the LGBT community out right. there, and I get it because I want to say, and I could be wrong, 70 to 75% of the WNBA is, is uh, you know, hom- a homosexual. Know. They're gay. Yeah, I don't, uh, know. I don't know. They're lesbian. And it's like, okay, I have no problem with you guys being lesbian. Right. But you can't shove that into your fan base mm-hmm. for an entire game if the majority of people who watch sports are heterosexual. Okay. That that's just that's just my opinion. Right. Uh I think if they Where the gunshots at? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. But I'm just saying that's just my opinion. I think if you if you monetize that, don't say don't show it at all. I think they should. I think they need to keep fighting for their advocacy and their rights mm-hmm. just like everyone else. But sure. if you cut that to a minimum, make the court uh, shorter, make the rim shorter, mm-hmm. like you start making it gear more for towards women's physiology, mm-hmm. they're going to look damn good and they're going to dominate and people are going to watch it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I, I, uh, I don't I don't think that should happen at all. Okay. And Chenea Gumake talked a lot about it. In one of the interviews about that, right? Like, yeah. how come there's not enough dunking and all this other stuff? And she's like, so you, you don't mean to tell me, like, I'm supposed to change everything about my game because you want to see a different style of two points. If you really think about it, like, okay, I'm dunking, but it's still worth two points at the end of the day, right? And so, like, she's like, nah, like, she's like, I can grab the rim, I can dunk. <laughs> like, I, don't, right. but I just choose not to, like. I want to play below the rim because I want to last a long time. I don't right. want I don't want all the injuries that you know the, all these other guys have had, right? So, I, I disagree with shortening it because I think what you've run into is kind of what the ABA ran into, and they make it a situation where you have your four point rules and all the other stuff and your three D rules. You know what I mean? Like now it's almost 
you, you gimmick it right. some and it will never be taken serious. If she's damned if she does, damned if she doesn't. If you if you make it a, a shorter court, lower rim, they'd be like, Well, that's not ten feet. That's not ninety four by fifty, so uh, it's not really that good. You know what I mean? Like I don't think that the fan base wants to see that. I would think they want to see the length of players. That, I mean, and you look at teams like Connecticut, to be ex- for one example, they play super fast, shoot within the first six to eight seconds of the shot clock, score high amounts of points, and do it at a very high level. Like, all their players are really, really good, right? So I think if you have that as a model, I think what needs to happen is that as coaches, we need to start demanding more from our players male and female like no you can run faster because you're just supposed to get to the spot and it's supposed to be a certain amount of time we're looking for these things to happen i think if you put those standards there like i think you'll see certain things that may be more appealing to people right the right. quickness of stuff but if you ever watched a WNBA game especially recently the reads and the counters are just as fast as the men's game you just don't get up in the air and dunk that's literally that i've seen the differences right so um I think the level of play below the rim is just the same. You just don't have the above the rim play. Right, and I totally agree with you. But that's why I was just saying in terms of the business side of it because sure. the average consumer, because we're looking at it from a lens of being basketball players. Right. Mm. right. We're looking at it from a lens of knowing the game, of knowing angles, of yeah. knowing you know, uh, uh, efficiency and production. Yeah. Right? Think about the average. Think about the consumer, though. That's the thing about it. That's the the hard part. That's the balance. That's why I say college is kind of absolve of that type of stuff because it's not a business. Mm-hmm. The WA is a business. You know what I mean? But that's sure. that's what I'm saying. That's the lens of where I'm coming from. Yeah, I and mean. I think I think I honestly like there are some 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 things they can do business wise. One, don't rent a twenty five thousand. <laughs> seat arena yeah. you know what I mean yeah. when when, when your you average have, attendance is 6,500 yeah. I mean like, that's just the numbers that's the first step like find an arena size or build an arena that's you know maximum capacity 10,000 and that's basically you know until you grow your base yeah. build a bigger arena after that now building an arena is like sounds easy just build an arena it's right, right, right. millions of dollars right. I get it mm-hmm. but like you know I, I think that's kind of one of the starts is like don't put them in empty arenas so then it doesn't feel less of an environment that you want to be in. Um, there was some, um, there was, I forgot where the stars played um, when they were in, in San Antonio, but they played in like a uh, arena that seated either five or 7,000 and it felt like it was packed mm-hmm. and it was a great environment. Right. But when you put them in these large 25,000 or 17,000 seat arenas, like it feels like empty space there. And so I think that takes away from the environment. I think everybody wants to be a part of the mass. And when you take away that and you see all this empty space and you only show like that bottom portion of the thing, people know, like people know there's not a lot of people there. Right. So, um, but I think that's one thing for sure. Um, I think they, they figured it out now how to pay players more, which is great. Um, But there has to be eyes on the product. Right. And so I think doing more in the community, will allow eyes to be there it's not about winning the championship like that's great and all (laughs) you can win the championship but that doesn't mean more people are going to come and watch Mm -hmm. i think it's the connection to the community which the nba does a great job at like they connect in the community they do large ticket giveaways they have a specific amount of so they know they have a specific amount of people that's going to be there every single time the group sales i mean i don't know i forgot which team it was if it was seattle storm um but they have one of the few teams that really sell out because they're in key arena right so where the where the uh supersonics used to play Mm. right and so they fill out their arena because they have a huge basketball fan base in the northwest but then let alone um not just that they're the only professional basketball team to watch up there you know what i mean they have in washington they have gonzaga they have that you know stuff like that but like they don't have a professional basketball team and so they're the only show in town so people come and watch that i think that's really important as well um but I, I just I, I think finding a way that, and and to to, to comment on your uh, LGBT thing, like I, it's one of the questions that I've been trying to figure out. You know what direction they're going? Mm-hmm. WNBA is going. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, yeah. I don't know what direction they're going um, with that. But I, I do think that, um, you know, advocating for people's rights. Is very important. I agree. We have a lot of that yeah. in the NBA. Yeah, you know. So, 
Um, I think it's definitely important to put that out there. Uh, but I don't know the direction that they're talking about going. To. Exactly. I just don't know enough information yeah. on it, unfortunately. But um, I could see that that could be something that could uh, detract maybe people from coming. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, and so and it's stupid. And I don't agree yeah, with it's it. It's silly. Like it's really, it's really silly that that's the case. But those women out there balling, who gives a shit? Yeah. about yeah. you know who they lay with. That's yeah, se- sexual orientation never mattered to me. Um, it what matters to me more is how uh, if you're gonna. St- Strictly talk about the business side of things. Like, what can you do to connect with a community that allows people to come inside? And if you're allowed, you're allowed to connect with people, or you can connect with people on a deeper level, then your sexual orientation, hetero or homosexual, it, it doesn't have a, a factor. You know, so um, yeah, I just don't know much about like WNBA's agenda yeah. with, with that, we or even if it is an agenda, know. if it's yeah. just something that they're just acknowledge. I don't know. Yeah, you know, but we all uh, don't. but. But no, I could I could see that because I mean that's one of the things that I didn't know going to a WNBA game is is seeing as much of uh, I think it's I, I want to say it's Pride Month, isn't it? Like, yeah, 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 I think it's yeah. Pride Month. So, um, you know, I did I wasn't aware of that, you yeah. know. But I mean, I have family members that are homosexual and and I support them a hundred percent. So like for me, it's it's a, a sexual orientation doesn't stop me from going to a basketball game or yeah. stop me from interacting with people. Exactly. Um, and so sh- and shout out to Coach uh, Carte for that. Yeah. You know, she, shout out to Coach yeah. Give a splash Carte, for her, man. man. Carte, she, she Carte is, boy. <laughs> she getting your ass, bro. She, right? yeah. she getting your got ass. Got no man. filter. She, she love that care. woman, man. Um, but you know my my. I I never been to a WNBA game before I did the WNBA like uh, Monarchs and it was wild to me when I went there I did, I just wasn't in, involved in the environment at all I just did not know that there was a lot of uh, homosexual women and and LGBTQ I didn't know that you know at the time and then I opened my eyes and I'm like oh okay well you know that's uh, it doesn't stop me from going to the game it's exactly. just an element of the game and so. Yeah, I don't know much about it though. Honestly, I haven't done a lot of research on it. Well, I mean, sorry, you got, Chris. No, that's, I don't need. I don't need research. <laughs> oh, from sorry, I'm just telling you my thoughts. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> Mark, did you have anything else you um, want to add? Or? To kind of you know get away from the whole seriousness, and I was just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I told you we got to talk some yeah, real shit know, sometimes, man. Stuff, we got to. Maybe while, maybe man. you can answer this chat. Like you know yeah. when, when you were uh, talking about the whole physiology of you yeah. know men or you know. Just more bigger, stronger, faster. On average. On average. On average. Because yeah. if Ronda Rousey fought me, yeah, yeah, she yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah. my Chris. So, yeah. She might be my. So like my que- <laughs> so my question is, you know, maybe it's a dumb question or not, but it's like, then why are the the, the size of the basketballs different? Like why? Like what is what is the reasoning of that? Sure. So one of the things that I struggle with a lot was calling it a men's or a women's ball, mm-hmm. right? The reality yeah. is it's not. It's okay. an intermediate and a full size. Okay. Right. <laughs> that's, that's the terminology for it. So okay. sorry if people call it men and you know, girls yeah. and boys ball, but okay. the, the difference is that the hand size mm, okay. stays the same and it stops growing, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas men, they continue to grow. Their hand size oh, gets okay. bigger, okay. right? So okay. that makes sense. Yeah, and... Physiology wise, yes, men mm-hmm. are stronger, so they can play with a heavier basketball. Mm-hmm. They can shoot it. Or why are you going to throw that, yeah. you know, intermediate yeah. ball all yeah, over yeah, creation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> okay. yeah, that has something to do with the physiology for yeah. sure. But there's a reason why in sixth grade, like kids, you know, don't play with the full size ball because mm-hmm. physically they yeah. can't they yeah. can't handle it. You know, okay. it's too big. The ball's too okay. big and it's too heavy. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I you know I don't know why they don't all play with a full size. Yeah. You know, in fact, but three on so in the three on three world uh the basketball is the size of the intermediate but the weight of the full really yeah wow. so that's in the three on three world that's so they the men and the women play with the same yeah. size basketball nice. and it's the same weight wow okay. so if they went to that model yeah. i don't think that would be a problem i just think you have guys like Kawhi leonard or michael yeah. jordan whose yeah, hands are hands like are through like, the roof you know <laughs> what i mean yeah, yeah, for and real. so that's gonna that that can be kind of the issue but like yeah. i think that that was interesting when i found that out like wow i did not know yeah. that the three on three ball was the same size regardless wow. so that's a step in a positive yeah, direction for, for sure. sure for sure so, all right, um, and switching, you know, to the next thing. I mean, um, 
something that I kind of wanted to talk about too, since we had some AAU weekend mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and uh, I got a couple of texts from the director of the courtside thing, uh, Elijah oh One, and <laughs> he was saying, uh, "Shout out Elijah One, yeah, shout definitely shout out <laughs> Elijah One, good dude." Yeah. Um, he was um, telling me or uh, showing me texts from other directors that wanted to that like they. You know, I got. I think I've told you this mm -hmm. numerous times. I'm gonna say, "Hey, YBA, or want to be YBA." <laughs> he knows yeah. now that he's in it. How much, Chris? Yeah. Before, hey, we're like, good. Everybody, yeah. everybody don't mind me. You yeah, right. I mean? They don't mind you. <laughs> yeah, but I get a lot of you yeah. know, and, and um, they literally text him like, "Man, I want that light skin coach with the tattoos <laughs> or that dude, Chris." Like super descriptive, yeah, right? right. Is that, is, yeah, they're like, "I want, I want that coach, man." Yeah. Like, and and I'll, you know, to me, I laugh about. It. I take yeah. it as a compliment. Yeah, yeah. I, really I feel is. like if they. A lot of coaches would never probably say it or admit it, but I do feel they look at me as their their friendly rival. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if I beat that guy, yeah. it gives me validity. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. If I beat his team, right. it validates my team. And I'll be that standard. You know what I mean? It's like if you beat Coach K or if you beat, mm -hmm. you know, Phil Jackson or Greg Popovich or whatever, like you get that like, mm -hmm. yeah, man, like mm -hmm. I'm in a step in the right direction. I'll be that. I don't right. give a shit. Like it right. don't matter to me because ultimately I just want the kids to have fun and grow. But – um, I wanted to talk about that. Just coaches and trainers yeah. kind of piggybacking like we did last episode, mm -hmm. coaches and trainers that have these type of – where it becomes more – where it's not a rivalry, it becomes more just hate, like yeah. just venom and hate. And it tra and it starts to translate into their kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because these kids, they they start basically trying to like mind manipulate them into hating you or into right. hating mm -hmm. this organization or, you know, speaking bad on to parents, trying to get parents to hate this organization. I really hate – and again, I know you know this a lot more than me too, because we're in just more attached to this AAU world. You might know it in the training world. Mm -hmm. It's just coaches who straight out lie, right? Who mm -hmm. just straight out lie to these kids and give them all these false promises, like right. you know, train with me. I'm gonna make you D one. <laughs> right. Well, how he's he's a five seven sixteen year old. Like yeah. how how yeah. like yeah. come on man, let's be realistic. Let's get yeah. him NAI. Let's yeah. let's let's yeah. focus on JC. Yeah. yeah, let's try prep school. Like you know, what I mean, like mm -hmm. I hate trainers. Who either coaches who either lie to get the bag, right, yeah, yeah. or they just lie uh, to fit their own ego or their agenda. Right, and yeah. you know, there's plenty of organizations on that yeah, women's side who do is. that. There's plenty of organizations on my men's side who do that. And I'm sure you run across plenty of trainers, mm -hmm. Mark, who do that. So, mm -hmm. just trying to get you guys' thoughts on that. Well, <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> I'm trying, to, Chris. I'm trying to trying to be politically to, correct. To, to he, be he ain't Chris. like me, y'all. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say your I'm name. Be, I'm gonna I'm gonna say your organization. I'm trying I don't to be give the example, damn. Chris. I'm trying to be the example. You be That's the all. example. I'll be I'll, I'll be I'll be the asshole. Okay. It's cool. That's why we work well together. So, yep. uh, um, so you know, for really the biggest thing that I tell a lot of the parents, I, I said, look, if you have McDonald's, Burger King, and In and Out, you can choose either one of them. They still serve burgers at the end of the day. So in and out might work better for you. McDonald's might work better for you. Burger King might work better for you. I just know what I'm doing and how I'm trying to do it. So if you want to roll that way, we can do it. If you don't, more power to you, but I got these kids to focus on. So I can't help you out anymore. Not that I don't want you to be successful, but I got my 10, 11, or 12 kids that I got to focus heavy on. Right. right. So like if there is time, then I'll help you out. But it's a big if because I'm fully invested in those people that I have. Yeah. Um, and in a training space, I haven't ran into it as much because I'm I'm actually uh, – so I frame myself more as uh, a holistic development coach, I guess you can call it, where um, I work – I don't do, like, drills on specific stuff. I work on concepts basketball-wise, and I just say, okay, we're going to rep this a ton of times, and then we, the next month we're going to work on a different concept and rep it. So anybody can come in whenever they can join. Like, I've yeah. tried to more go that route. Before, I was more like, I'm going to just teach you your skill set stuff, and then I'm going to be the one. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, but, like, how do – one, how do I work with more people, but then two – how do I actually teach them things that can translate regardless if they work with me or not? If they go to somebody else, they can work with them. Maybe like, well, at least they understand what they're supposed to do. They just don't have the skills yet to operate in that framework, right? So I got more into teaching those concepts. Um, so I haven't ran into it as much, but I have had people that have, you know, work with other – I still do have people that work with other people mm. and trainers. And I'm like, good, as long as you're learning, that's the one thing. What I don't, what I don't get caught up into is taking the credit. Like I, 
I had to learn that. That was tough, you know, mm-hmm. to not take credit for it because you're invested. You're working with this person so much. And I start seeing, start saying I, I, I a whole lot. And I was like, wait a minute. But I'm not the only coach they've ever worked with. Mm-hmm. One coach that had, you know, worked with me, that wasn't the only coach that ever worked with me either. They all had a part in it. So mm-hmm. I said, all right, well, if that's the case, then let me take I out of it and let me make it about them. And if it ran its course, at least they're prepared for the next step. Mm-hmm. That's how I started framing my mindset on everything. And of course I work with people for a long time. Sometimes I don't, it just kind of goes in and out. Um, I still want the kids to be successful, but like I got to focus on my kids that I'm working with now. And if you want help, you can come back in the gym and we'll help you out. Uh, Hey, you stuff. It's, it's wild, man. Uh, I came back cause I just wanted to help. Not because of anything else. I got tired of kids coming to college and not having certain things. And so instead of me saying, man, these kids don't have this, 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 and that, in the NAI, you can coach club basketball. Mm. You can train kids. So I mm. said, all right, cool. I'm going to come back and do it and help. And it's been a lot of interesting conversations that, you know, uh, coaches from the outside looking in have with parents, you know. And I get screenshots of stuff, and I see it, and I'm just like, well, I can understand why your daughter's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm not saying that you're not going to get that from somebody else, too. Just understand, like, what I am what I see her needing to do plus what her coach has said because mm-hmm. I actually email coaches, their high school coaches, and be like, "Hey, I'm working with your daughter, or not your daughter, but your your uh, your player this summer. I would love to know what her role is going to be next year, so I can integrate that into what we're doing, right?" Um, and I update them as well. I'll send them an email, say, "Hey, all the stuff that we're working on, this is what we're doing, this is how we're progressing through everything." So I want them to be part of a process as well, right? And that's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. Not everybody wants to communicate with those high school coaches. I get it, but they go back to them. They don't come back to me you know i'm not the only person that's a part of it so uh, i try to include everybody and um you know if it works great if it doesn't work then that's kind of on them but um i've got a lot of a lot of since i've been doing this everybody's been like you're that girl's really really good she should come play for my team Mm -hmm. i'm just like well you're i don't own you (laughs) so you can go like i'm not mad just understand if you go there though like walking there with their plan don't come in there expecting everything like have a conversation make sure that coach cares about where you're going to be four years five years from now because if you're not you're going over there for vanity you're not going over there to actually be helped you know so um that's the only thing i can promise them is that i that i care but i can't promise them anything else if they work hard you get the opportunity but i can't promise anything else from there you know What about you, Mark? What What about your experience? Well, I mean, remember, I mean, last week, you know, mm-hmm. not to go back into that story, but, you know, I told you my little, because like you said, like, I don't, I feel like, because I'm not necessarily with a coach with AU and everything like that, that yeah. I haven't really experienced anything like that, because I'm, you know, as just a personal individual skills trainer, I'm focused on just the kid. Yep. And of course, the family. Yeah. But I've I've noticed because, you know, because where, where I train at, it's not big, like, you know, I'm not in SAC, I'm not in the Bay. So Dixon, Vacaville, I've noticed that, you know, a lot of what I do, especially when I've just started, you know, I, I would help kids who've never had a trainer, who've, mm. who've never had the opportunity. Like their parents ain't going to drive all the way to the Bay Area or SAC right. to find a trainer that, you know, I have a few kids where, you know, I've, I've worked with them. I've, I've spent time with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of time where they've never experienced anything like that, that maybe their high school coach, you know, there's some envy, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. thinking that, oh, well, okay, well, because in a way, not saying that maybe it makes them look bad. It's like, how do you not develop a 6'8 kid <laughs> that's in Dixon? Yeah. I'm not going to say no names. But You're how, better than me. You know but what I'm saying? But you can put two or two together. <laughs> but, but, it does equal four. Yeah, but uh. if, you, if you're listening to this podcast and you yeah. know me, you know who I'm talking about. But <laughs> Just shots fired on oh, yeah. so it's like, So it's like when you have a kid. You know, who's six eight that lives in a small town, but yet he's not developed, and you don't mm. play him. And who knows? Like I say, I'm not gonna put race in it or whatnot. But and then I just reach out and just want to help him. Mm. And you see the development, you see the videos, because all the family members see it, all mm. the people in town see it. And now there's this kind of tension where right. it doesn't have to be said, but it's like I'm just doing something that you didn't do for almost four years, Crazy. right? Or maybe another kid who's you know he has potential, but yet, you know, a lot of trainers, I feel like, want the kids who are almost there compared to starting from scratch. Right. Yeah. And then. Right. I've it takes had patience. Yeah, oh, exactly. Man. Exactly. Jeez, you know, and then say. Started. Yeah. And, then, you know, say I work with a kid and 
he starts blowing up a little bit. But mm-hmm. okay, I'm not from the I'm not from the area, you know. Mm-hmm. But that that kid is from this area though, you know. what I'm saying like like making it seem like you know I knew he was good. Yeah. But it's like okay, well you know there's a big gap though of when like I said. And I appreciate how you are. You know, you're very, very humble. Yeah. I'm very, very confident in what I do. Yeah. And I feel like that the time that I spent, you know, because low key, like, you know, I'd be, you know, 24-7, yeah. you know, from the training yeah. to staying up late at night, not just the editing. Because when I edit, that's my time to break down film mm-hmm. and watch my kids. So it's not just, okay, I'm with them during the day in the morning when I go back home, which is... You know, I'm still trying to balance the family life and everything yeah. like that. But I also understand there's sacrifice to have to be made now in order for everything to be good later. That Can I say something to that, though? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go so ahead. Go when ahead. I hear the word go sacrifice ahead. a lot, I hear it a lot. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I frame it as investment. Like, okay. yes. you go see a return on it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. like, yes. I, I've always thought sacrifice was removing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're yeah, investing yeah. something, you're giving to I like it. that. So, I just wanted to just say no, that because yeah, I hear yeah. that. I hear that a lot. I like that because my wife don't like when I say that. Yeah. You're like, man, I'm Investing yeah, yeah, in yeah, yeah. Future, you feel I'm gonna me? start using that now. Yeah. I think you know she'll start understanding <laughs> yep, that. She'll get it but, right um, away. But yeah, man, like, 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 I'm very confident in what I do, and, and I'm a person that will do maybe too much because okay. I'm not about money. You right. know, I don't have to edit film. I don't have to make these videos and right. and this and, and everything like that because I use that for that individual player. And anybody yeah. else who sees that, yeah. if that inspires you, then okay, then you yeah. know what I'm saying. So, so I've noticed that. And you know this, when you start getting some success, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I don't have to say anything. It's just the work that I do. But <laughs> right. for some reason, you just start feeling these different type of vibes from sure. certain people. Everything but changes. If, exactly. But it's the good still outweighs everything. Right. And so that's kind of, you know, like I said, like for me as a trainer and me just starting up, I've been doing this for two to three years. I've noticed that where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm really just passionate in what I do. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, why why are you hating? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's 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 me about that. So that's what I, I don't I can't even imagine being a coach. Oh you know, bro. Like, oh my that's god. World. It's, it's wild. Like <laughs> I literally and I just I smile at it and I laugh at it because I get why the coaches are doing it. I understand mm-hmm. that they genuinely feel that they can help. Mm-hmm. Um and I never tell a parent not to go there. I'm super like, yeah, do whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Like it to me, that's if you feel it's better to go over there, go over there. Just yeah. understand. And I, I saw this quote, I think it was on Instagram or something like that. But it was like the grass is always greener where you water it. And I thought that was super duper important. Okay, like okay. if you don't invest into yourself, yeah, of course, it's not going to be good. Yeah. It's not. It just never is. Right. So yeah. but if you. Go somewhere else. And again, it might match the level that you're trying to get to. So, for example, I've had conversations with players that currently you play. I'm like, look, you might have maybe two years with me mm. before somebody's going to really want you. Yeah. Right. Like, that's just the reality. And I'm OK yeah. with that. Like, yeah. I get it. My job is to prepare you for that, yeah. though. Yeah. Like, so I'm trying to teach you everything, get you the mentality, get you to understand, go through all that tough stuff. Because yeah. when you get to that step. And you got to go perform. You don't want to have to go through that then. You want to go through it now exactly. when you're younger and it doesn't really like it doesn't add up to where you lose out on opportunities. Right. Yeah. So um, that for me has always been important. And it's it's a it's a different way to look at it. And the, and the parents looked at me like I was crazy. They were like, wait, you don't want to coach her for the next four years. I'm like, I would love to coach her for the next yeah. four years. But the right. reality is yeah. she's going to be nice in like yeah. one or two years. So, like, yeah. go get that. Like, you yeah. don't have to worry about my ego on that one yeah. my job is to get her where she needs to get to yeah. you know so i i always have the end in mind and what people want yeah. and sometimes i know they're gonna have to spend more time with me sometimes i know they're not gonna spend much by the time yeah. they get these couple pieces they're gonna be off and yeah. they don't need me no more yeah. right so yeah. and that's the key part the uh, word you said ego yeah you know what yeah. i mean i think that's uh the biggest part for a lot of these coaches and trainers they put a lot of their ego into it mm-hmm. and because of that that's why ultimately I think a lot of them fail. I yeah. mean, or they try to portray themselves. I, mm-hmm. I love I, I, I love the trainers that I see that try to portray like shit is sweet when it ain't. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, yeah. like come on now. You know you're struggling. You know certain mm-hmm. things yep. ain't in place. Like, yep. just be real with your audience. Be real with your kids. Be real with your families. Yeah. And and things will go well. I yeah. mean, that's just honestly. At least the philosophy I think it works. Yeah. You know, I think that's why it works for yep. me as a coach. You know, yeah, I'm a, you got all of you got all of Placer, <laughs> Yolo County. Uh, Wait, no, I, no, I, I, Yuba false. County. That is false. You don't? No, I don't. 
So I, I trained a few. Sorry. So I this is the thing few. that I got. This is the bone I got to pick with you, Chris. Okay. What's the bone? Yeah, you're lying to the people. I'm you not lying to the people. This. And uh, people live in different counties, right? <laughs> and they're going to be like, wait, he didn't list my county. <laughs> exactly. You train everybody in I don't the train everybody. Areas. I don't train everybody. Chris is all right if you train everybody. I, I don't train everybody. I train a good amount of kids because I get them <laughs> from different. I, uh, from different areas, areas a little okay, bit okay. a little yeah. bit right. a little bit but not as many as you you okay, make it out that, to be that's not on your ig store <laughs> i just do i think i do what i can do the best that i can do <laughs> see yeah you say you were not switzerland and you're playing the middle role right now <laughs> i'm not playing a, what i'm tap dancing like cam Newton t- right now man tap, tap dancing, dancing <laughs> for sure <laughs> <laughs> no man like man you know me bro at the end of the day i just get tired of all i hate is when coaches lie to these kids and right. shit man like i had a kid uh who man i i tried to straight up like this kid's nice his name's bryson bryson shackleford y'all better remember <laughs> that name because this yeah. kid gonna fuck around and go d1 right yeah. shout out to bryson for sure i gotta gotta give him some dog on that one because he's a dog okay. for real like Came to me, play with this past weekend with the um, 16U, and killed it. Yeah. Had hella dunks, was out there nice. like, And I, shit, I tried to take him from Lake Show, straight up. Like, no no offense, Lake Show, but yeah. I wanted I wanted this kid, sorry. Yeah. And and uh, and he turned me down. Okay. And I mean, when I talk about it, I threw some shit at him that I thought was like, yeah. he going to say yeah. yeah. I was going to get him a spot. On the Under Armour shoe circuit, West Coast Elite team, wow. Brandon Cole's team. You know okay. Brandon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brandon. Yeah. I had a spot ready wow. for this kid. Like wow. he would have had everything free. Okay. Fly out everywhere. Just so y'all understand, this 16U team they got at West Coast Elite has a billionaire <laughs> parent, wow. not million, billionaire wow. parent right. on this team. Right. Wow. They were gonna cash out everything. Right. And he said no. Wow. He said no. I said play for West Coast League and me at YBA. Everything's done. Everything's paid for. And he said no because he had been with Lake Show for like two or three years. Okay. He's really close with the coach. Okay. And respect. you know what? I said, man, I respect the shit yeah. out your loyalty. Yeah. Because yeah. I really did play the devil right there. I was <laughs> like, man, sign the contract, bro. <laughs> sign the contract, man. And he oh, said man. no. And man. at the end of the day, I, I respect the yeah. shit out that kid for that. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. You know what I mean? You and have to. And I and I respect Lake Show as a program. I mean, there's certain programs. I'm not gonna lie. I have no respect for your program. Right. Like if you want if you want to play against my teams, if you want to yeah. get all the smoke, whatever. Like man, I don't care about all that because I don't respect your program because I know how you move. Okay. I know how you lie. I know how you right. you know you try to make girls uh, feel or girls or guys feel like shit because they didn't mm. play for you and you put all this guilt on them and you put all this. Well, why yeah. are you over here? Like I don't respect none of that. That part sucks. These You're are an children. Adult. You're at an the adult. end of the day, you these are children. Be I'm not gonna make a brains. super high level twelve year old feel like shit because he doesn't want to play for me right. one weekend. Right. What, what do I look like doing that? Like right. no, I say, man, you want to hoop somewhere else? Go have fun. Right. Go have fun. Tell me how it was. Shoot yep. me a text. Let me know how you play. Like that's yep. that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. But that, you know, there's not a lot of coaches that move like that. They do a lot of inappropriate, especially as the kids get older, sixteen, yeah. seventeen. They say a lot of inappropriate shit. Yeah. They talk down. They curse at them. I've seen Texas. I've mm-hmm. seen the type of shit. I've I've had. I've literally had coaches talk about me from kids that decided they'd rather play with me than them sit there and be like, well, you know, he's this, he's that, you mm-hmm. know, he, he, he going to try to fuck your mama. He wow. going to try to, you know, he, he don't, he don't have no college contacts. Wow. He going to like, I'm like, Yo, dude, you, I've never met you. Yeah, <laughs> like, how Yo, do you, wild. how do you have all this uh, uh, knowledge about me? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's all incorrect. Yeah. Cause anybody who really knows me as you have, cause we've been friends for 20 damn years. Like, you know what I'm all about. I'm yep. about working my ass off and about these kids. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And our friendship's newer, Mark, but yeah. I'm pretty sure you yes. can tell that that's just all I'm about. That's why I'm here. Right. Yep. And, and that's, and that's crazy to me. And so that shit I can't respect. But this kid Bryson and what he did, man, I was like, you know what? I, I gotta respect that, man. Can't and even I, be mad. Can't yeah. Even be mad no, I can't it. be mad at all. I mean, no, that's good. So we're gonna go. Into the segment, the not a good fit story. You know, that's the not a good fit segment. Okay. So I got another, I got a story time. I got another story oh, time for boy. y'all for the not a good fit segment. There we go. Not a good fit. Yeah, not a good fit. So had this kid, right? His name's Chris. We did a scrimmage last Monday. 
right? They're the scrimmage of the top 16 you guys. I put one team on one side, one on another. The team that I kind of in my mind thought would win beat the other team by 40. Damn. Ouch. 40 piece they ass. Ouch. So Chris comes to me. I'm like, because I told him, I said, man, I don't think you, I think you need to play at the 17 UC level so you get more opportunity and okay. more burn. No, he doesn't like that. <laughs> he gets mad at that. And unfortunately, his mom enables this yeah. and kind of reinforces this. So what happens this very weekend? He gives me the loner journey jersey back, okay. and then he's playing for Rose City. Ooh. Literally, the team we played last weekend, he is now playing on that team. Yeah. And then we go ahead and play this course side tournament. And what happens, my 16U team, after you know I had to make those moves, and he obviously cut himself because I didn't have to cut him, yeah. um, we win the whole damn thing, Ouch. right? Blow everybody out, win by 20. His team goes 0-2. Right. Not to say he's the fault, but I'm so this illustrates back to like what I said with episode one. If you're not willing to let your kids take an L, then maybe it's not a good fit. If you're not willing to let your kid learn through the process and trust the process, then maybe it's not a good fit. Sure. And again, that just comes down to it's not a good fit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I, and that's just another little tidbit, little story of the life of an AAU coach that I just wanted to share with y'all. Because if this kid might have stayed, played that 17U mm-hmm. who knows what could have happened yeah. but instead he's like I'm taking my ball and leaving mm-hmm. and I'm gonna go do my thing over here and now we'll never know yeah right yeah. so right so with all that being said man I just wanted to say you know Ted thank you for being here yeah you, thank you thank you, you very much hold on hold on before we go what's up are you gonna give me my green M&Ms <laughs> hey. I'm just saying no, like. can we stop being bougie right now <laughs> Uh, you, you did say, look, you got you got the Coca Cola. It still Coke. has it's half full. Well, I had a, I had a little bit of Hennessy with my Coke. Okay, so well, I'm feeling good. Kids, <laughs> what do you mean, kids? Like, then I'm an adult. Oh, I can drink. Uh, I can't uh, drink. I can't drink I mean, and chill out. I just want I just want some Coca Cola. Okay, first. well, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up with some Coke. Man. And then but, I, I did get the water though, so I appreciate that. I, I just I didn't do. get the green M and M's. Okay, um, no. so I wish I would have had that. I will try to do better as a host. Please. But I think, but I think you've been an amazing guest, Thank and you. especially being my first one, because mm-hmm. again, you know, I'm still new to the podcast world, just like everybody yeah, else. But, but no, you've been you've been doing some great stuff, man. I um, I really appreciate you being here. I re- appreciate your support, and you've always been yeah. super supportive of everything I do, and yeah. and I'm always super supportive of everything you always. do. You know, it's all love, brother. Like you want to my best friends and you know i'm just glad you're here i really am i'm glad of what you're doing what you're here mark you uh you got any words bro um appreciate meeting you man yeah um i've been following you you're actually very inspirational very knowledgeable um so like i told chris you know i'm just soaking up everything when i'm around you guys to help elevate and inspire the people that are around me so Thanks, oh. thanks for being on the show, bro. No, I appreciate it. Everybody, follow me at, at Coach Ted on Instagram, yeah, yeah. at Coach yes, Ted sir. tweets on Twitter. Yeah, I don't have well, a. Well, I was I, gonna say repeat that because I'm gonna make sure everybody follows you, bro. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Here we go with this nonsense, Chris. All right, <laughs> at Coach Ted. If y'all know how to spell it, figure it out <laughs> on Instagram. Okay, and then we got at Coach Ted tweets because somebody stole that at Coach Ted. They stole it. Yeah, they That's stole hilarious. it. So I'm a little upset about that. Uh, let me see. Do I have anything else? LinkedIn? No, I'm not going to do that. I don't know, I know LinkedIn. I do not have a – actually, I do have a TikTok. Yeah. I just made one. That's fun. So hey. I can't ever look for some TikTok stories. I, I mean, I ain't download I'm not – I, I can't do – I can't do TikTok, dog. But I do have one because I was encouraged to get one, so I do have one. Okay. Um, but yeah, follow me and all that stuff. And if you wanted to be inspired or educated, that's what I do on there. So. And and as as my you know as my as my nephew uh, Anthony Williams would say, <laughs> <laughs> you know you got to be out here and you got to be too big, too black. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how I got to be. That's how you got to be out here. No, uh, again, um, thanks for coming in, man. I, yeah. I appreciate you being here. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening. We appreciate you guys supporting. Um, you know, just keep keep the hustle, man. Keep following for all you guys grinding out there, all you kids out there working in the gym, man. Keep that shit up, you know. And we're just gonna keep talking about that life, talking about real basketball, real situations, and we out. <laughs>